Hello, wonderful friends. Bless you, bless you, bless you. We're finished with Thanksgiving, but we still, oh, God wants us to have a thankful heart. But I'm still going to talk a little bit more about the, the Puritans, the, the pilgrims, <laughs> they, the, because I want to, it's really impacted me like, oh, we, we are so blessed in America, even though I see the bad things happening. God has made a covenant with our nation. <coughs> and those promises are still true, like he had with Abraham, with the land, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And oh, but God remembers what his promises, like he put the rainbow in the sky, didn't he? <coughs> and killed, excuse me. That's the promise. He will not send a flood again. And he will take care of us. And it says there that season will fall night and day and spring and fall for, till the end of time that is going to happen. He is a covenant-making God. Oh, and he made a covenant with America. No matter what bad news we have, yes, we pray, but we can declare our words have power. And our God is is appreciative it's a sweet smelling incense to him when we worship him and we thank him and he wants to bless us but yes there are things standing in the way but we can stand in the gap dear friends we can stand in the gap with our prayers you know righteousness is a weapon righteousness yes we see bad things that are happening but Lord Jesus, you planted America. Oh, these people that you gave them the power. You directed their footsteps. You blessed them. So I'm going to continue with a few more stories. Um, you know, when they came here, I told you they found this plot of ground that was all cleared up. And they found this kettle in the ground with a corn in it. And they thought, oh, well, I have to give this. And we're not going to eat it all. We're going to give it back to these Indians. And they did that. But, you know, then they started doing things. And then the Indians stole some of their implements and stuff. But, oh, God was watching over them. God has it all planned like he has plans for you, dear friend. Plans for you. Every baby that is created has a destiny, has a destiny, just like I told, I told you. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, God said in, the, in Jeremiah 1 that um, he was, he, God said, I knew you in your mother's womb and I consecrated you. For, to be a prophet to the nations, to build and to plant, to tear down and to de do these things, Jeremiah 1. I won't go into it now, but anyway, you too have a destiny for America or your nation. This is not a coincidence that, that um, you were able to listen to this because of the money that is given to OCN. We encourage you to do that, that this can go over the air uh, to your nation and no, don't look to America. Look to God. No one person can change anything but God did. But they were, what these pilgrims, they knew, they they were dedicated. They sold everything, and they got the, and then they got built out of some of their money and and, and the goods. And uh, but they said God's name. We are going to honor God's name and what we promised to do. Uh, and even though the weather got bad and half of them died, they took care of each other. They did not complain. They said, no, we're going to, God is going to take care of us. God brought us here safely now, and we're able to find this, this plot of land that's all cleared up, this kettle that had some corn in it, and, and some water, uh, some springs were right there. And... Oh, so they managed to go through the winter, on, made one common house. They all stayed there. They all took care of each other. But ha -ha, God had another, had some plan. And this was in my book. I was saying you can read this. You can get this free, um, download it free, or you can buy it from us. Um, Heroes from our heritage stories. Here we are. 
Uh, I did Christopher, Jack and I read it, my husband and I, um, Christopher Columbus, the real story of what God did in our nation, Christopher Columbus, the, the uh, friar, the Catholic friars, um, let's see, then I, I did uh, um, the pilgrims, then I did George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and uh, then my husband did uh, MacArthur. So these are what God did in our nation. So I was going to tell you. Uh, okay, so spring is coming, and half of them are, are, are still alive, and they're taking care of each other. There are some children there, but not very many able-bodied men, but they explored around there, and yes, they did meet some Indians. They called them uh, First Nations people, and they uh, made agreements with them, made agreements with them, and then God had a plan. There was a man by the name of Squanto. Um, this was on March 14 at the time of the, uh, 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 let's see, the Indians' hearts were stirring in compassion. It was a man. Um, let's see, the settlers' hearts were still tender toward God, and the high point of their week remained Sunday worship. On this balmy day on March 16, the pilgrims were gathered in the common house and a lone Indian approached them, entered their house, and in perfect English said, Welcome! <laughs> ah. The Indian's name was Samoset, a chief of the Algonquins, and he had learned his English from the English fishing captains who had uh, come along the main coast for years. And they actually captured him and another man named Squanto. And <coughs> they brought them to England just to show them as trophies and made them to be slaves, which was not good. But then they were able to come back later. And this Squanto uh, it was an interesting story. Um, he, he went to, to, uh, to England there. And he stayed for a while. But he, then they, he got sold and he went to some other place. And he got uh, into a Catholic a monastery. He got rescued there. And he heard about God, I believe. And then he got back on a ship. And he came back to America. And he found that was his land that was all cleared up. And he thought, oh, but some pilgrims, some English-speaking people were there. And he could have been vindictive and said, well, I'm going to kill them. They took my land and all my people are gone now. But God had changed his heart. I believe God had a plan. God has plans for you too, dear. He has plans for you, plans formed long ago in perfect faithfulness. He has plans for America. He has plans for your nation. You are not forgotten. You are important in his eyes, very important. Enough that Jesus came and spilled his blood for you so that you could go to heaven if you receive him. And I believe you have, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this program. Oh, okay. So the Squanto came, and uh, let's see, he's a chief, let's see, in Samoset, and um, then he came, Squanto came, and he said, oh, I know what those I can do. I can help them find where the fish are, the alewives, and the, uh, uh, what are the other names of the other <laughs> fish? He told, told them where they could get that and where the beaver were hiding and where the uh, deer and where the other animals were. They could have, and he taught them how to, how to plant the corn with the fish in there so they'd have fertilizer. He was a godsend. I believe that God had touched his heart that's the only way. He's always prepared, just like you are prepared. He's got good things prepared for you. And then I'm going to talk about the Thanksgiving. Well, that fall, then they had lots of, uh, they said, oh, we need to give thanks to God. We need to give thanks to God. So they invited the Indians to come. I call them Indian braves, and how many were there? Uh, okay, Massasoit, he's the uh, captain there. Or what is he the, uh, let's see, I don't know what his title was, but head of the, let's see. Uh, Massasoit arrived and Squanto was there, came with 90 
Indian braves, five dressed deer, and a dozen fat wild turkeys. <laughs> and the women taught the pilgrims how to make uh, pudding, uh, corn, meal, and uh, how to get ma uh, maple syrup and how to make popcorn. So anyway, God has a good plan for you. God has a plan for America and for your nation. He loves people. That's why Jesus offered to come and die on the cross to take our sins. Yes, we don't deserve a thing. We deserve to go to hell. <coughs> Excuse me. We inherited this evil nature, this wicked nature from Adam when Adam sinned. But God had a plan all the time. Even before the foundation of the world, Jesus offered to come down. He's part of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, um, when Adam sinned, had a plan, Jesus would come to form human flesh. And that's what we're going to celebrate at Christmas. Human. He came to a godly woman, Jesus. A miraculous birth. Uh, the, the seed put in Eve uh, by God the Father in a human body so that Jesus would demonstrate to us what we could do when we get born again. We can get a new nature. We can be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ with that power, oh, to forgive <clears throat> Look, these Indians, oh, they could have killed them, couldn't they? They thought, this is our land, and you go back to England, we're going to... I mean, they came with 90 braves that, that won thir first Thanksgiving, 90 of them, and they formed treaties with the Americans there, with the pilgrims, for 50 years, and they got along. And Lord Jesus had his grace and his mercy what he is so generous to us in america and we've misused it haven't it we've had our minds think on thinking on ourselves on, on 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 a bigger house maybe a bigger car and i said lord no no i don't want to be like that and that's why jack and i decided to go live in the jungle with this tribe and god changed our lives and we thought Oh, God is so good. He's protected us in America. In America, we can get our food. We can get our vitamins. See, these pilgrims didn't have the vitamins. They ran out of the butter. They ran, ran out of the lemon juice. They got scurvy. We have, uh, we have vitamins here. We have everything we need. And God is good. We can find a job. And Lord Jesus, I believe God's going to take care of your needs as you count on him, as you pray and surrender to him. He is gracious to you. Ephesians 1, verse 17 through 22 talks about he's blessed us with every spirit. And oh, that's Ephesians 1, uh, one, of the first, one of the first verses. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. It's for us. But and we have to choose righteousness. And I'm going to tell again what the Lord has given me even oh, after the election. I said, oh, Lord, what's happening? What's happening here? Here, He gave me Isaiah 56, verse 1. He said, blessed is the man who, who uh, let's see, Isaiah 56, verse 1, who uh, chooses righteousness and justice. He said, my salvation is about to come and righteousness will be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this. That means righteousness and justice. And for the blessed is the man who takes hold of this. So we take hold of it, Lord. We have no righteousness or justice of our own. We choose bad things. We've done that. We have, a, oh, even if this, uh, this oh, warring in our mind, but Lord Jesus, we surrender to you. And I believe, Lord Jesus, thank you for people like the pilgrims, people like Peel, people like George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, who, who, who loved our nation. They sacrificed. 
Oh, Lord, they sacrificed so much for our nation and gave up their good, their lives and everything. And even in the Civil War, do you know how many, how many people were, were killed in that Civil War? I think it was 600,000. I got it written on here on a piece of paper. Oh, let's see. 600,000 people died in the Civil War. So there should be no race problem. We are one. We are one. Thank God for the Chinese people. Thank God for all of us. Lord Jesus, we are created in your image, and we have, you have been given us the authority over these bad things that are happening, Lord. And we're not going to be quiet. We're not going to be quiet. We are not seeking for money. We are seeking for your righteousness. You said we would be blessed. We are doing it just to be blessed, but to give you, um, to make you happy. Uh, Lord Jesus, oh, because you prepared a way for us that when we die, we can go be with you. And in the meantime, we have your power available. We can speak the creative words like my husband taught. Uh, our DNA can be changed, he taught. And we can be changed into your image only by your power, but it's a death. It's a death to self, isn't it, dear, dear friend? It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> but look at what the pilgrims did. They died. Oh, Half of them died, and they were built out of their money and the, and the food, but God took care of them because they had a purpose. So I believe God has given you a destiny, dear friends, a destiny. So hang on. Eat the word. Eat the word. As Jeremiah said, I found your word, and I ate it, and it became the joy and the delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, Lord of hosts. Psalm 103, verse 20, he's given us angels. Oh, those angels. Oh, they hearken to the voice of his word. So we can speak the angels. We command, we commission the angels as we say, Oh, Lord, watch over my family. Watch over our government. Change things that need to be changed. You said that you are, your salvation is coming, and you said that righteousness would be revealed. I believe that that's true, that you are working. You are working. You're not sleeping. You never sleep. Oh, you always hear the cry of the afflicted and the needy. If you are sick, he hears your cry. Psalm 91, oh, he hears your cry as you... Find yourself in the shelter of the Almighty, in the shelter. Oh, you're covered by his wings. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He said with long life he would satisfy you and show you his salvation. I believe God was giving you wisdom, and we will live with him forever. And if you know Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He is a good shepherd. We came through the door of Jesus Christ, didn't we? And we know Jesus died for us. He, we are his sheep, and he's going to take care of us. He's going to feed you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. You're doing some good things. You're doing some good things in America. Let me see what the... Oh, um, no, let's see. As I was listening to Flashpoint, GoVictory.com, it said we need to rehearse our victories. This was um, Michelle Bachman who said that rehearse our victories, and this is the victories that the, that the pilgrims had. Rehearse these and say, well, Lord, oh, I remember when we didn't have much money. When we started out at the ministry, Jack gave up his job, and he gave up his uh, so much. We had to sell a car, and but God took care of us when we lived in the jungle. He brought in the money. He brought in the food. And we had victory. And some of I'm hearing from some of our students from that first year, 30 years ago, when we were with them in the jungle, or was it 30? I can't remember. 25 years ago, they even started schools. 
another girl found me and well, by Facebook, and she said, oh, I've started a school, and I did what you did. Uh, we planted a garden, and we had them work, and, and then I taught them some English, and we taught them the word. We taught them the word, and she showed me a picture of, oh, she had like 20 students. And, and, and she says, started out with children, but now she's got 20 students and taught them the word of God. She's in Thailand now. And other ones we got in, uh, um, let's see, Nebraska, a big group of them in Nebraska. Oh, Jesus. So, and then uh, we need to look about what's happening in America. There's a woman named Winsome Sears, and she was elected lieutenant governor in Virginia. And she said, she's tired of those who want to let the wounds, uh, who won't let the wounds of the past heal. Ha, huh. we've all had wounds in the past, haven't we? But Jesus gave us the power to forgive. He showed us. He gave his life, his blood. He put it on the altar in heaven for us. We have that as our heritage. When you receive Jesus, oh, when some Sears was happening in America, wounds of the past, like I said, 600,000 people died in the Civil War. Let's let that pass and say, God, we love you. doesn't matter what color you are. We love you. You are beautiful in God's eyes. He's created you. He's created you in the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came on f in flesh, came into a woman, and came uh, in flesh like we. He suffered. Oh, but he set an example. And he said, we can be like him with God's power by his grace. And he said, if you need help, he said, come with courage. Come with courage to the great, the throne of grace. What is this? Um, Hebrews 5, uh, 14. Come with, uh, with confidence to the throne of grace, and there you will find mercy to help in time of need. Oh, yes. We are welcome to come. We are welcome to come because of the blood of Jesus. And we can remind him of his promises. In fact, um, I remember Jacob... Uh, remember when he, he did the bad thing and he, uh, he took the birthright from him and he lied to his father and then Esau uh, was coming after him with a, uh, 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 with a bunch of, of other what, people with him and, and Jacob was afraid and he said, oh, he got, he said, but God, you said, where was this? God, you said I found this in here. You said that I would uh, have many children. i be blessed as a sand on the seashore. Oh, let me see that. Uh, let's see. Put uh, God says, put me in. Let's see. For thou did say, this is um, Genesis uh, 32, verse 13, 12. For thou didst say, I will surely bless you and make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered because he's facing Esau is coming. And he, Jacob had to rob him and lied to his father to get the blessing. But God, but he said, God, you said this. You said this. Has God spoken to you? He's spoken to me in Isaiah 56, verse 1. Blessed is the one who pursues righteousness and justice, for my salvation is about to come, and uh, truth will be revealed. So I bless you. I bless you uh, for healing, for the word comes alive to you. Your destiny comes alive, that you are an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you. Come again and be blessed. Be blessed in thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you.